My name is Dr. Patrick Harmon. I am a psychiatrist that is currently board certified, double boarded in general psychiatry, as well as child and adolescent psychiatry. Did my medical training at the Medical University of South Carolina uh, down in Charleston in 2011. And then since that time, I've been at Wake Forest University. And I did my residency training there, trained in the Child and Adolescent Fellowship that they had there. And then they were kind enough to ask me to stay on faculty and serve there on faculty for the better part of the decade. In a lot of different roles. Probably my favorite thing that I did was serve as the residency training director. So I got to, when medical students would graduate and they voiced kind of an interest in psychiatry, I would first try to find them, recruit them to come to our program, and then get to train them how to be a great psychiatrist. My specialization is really in child and adolescent psychiatry. Primarily, I like working with folks that are high schoolers and college age students. I did some doctoral work before actually going into medicine and adolescent development. And that was kind of the reason that I decided to go into medicine at all. So I went into medical school knowing that I wanted to do child and adolescent psychiatry specifically. And I like working with that particular age group the most. I mentioned medicine was a second career for me. My first career was actually as a Presbyterian minister, and I worked with that same age group, you know, working with adolescents, working with families, with parents who were trying to figure out how to help their kids develop into reasonable adults. And so I, I, I guess all of that just kind of fused in together. Certainly learned a lot about child development from my own kids. I have six of them. And so they taught me a lot about what it is to be a child and what it is to develop into an adult. And then I learned a lot of the psychological side of that just from my theological training. And then I wanted to add the biological piece by going to medical school. So it all kind of works well together, I think. One of the biggest things that happened when I was doing my doctoral studies and just adolescent development, you know, before medical school, I was writing a dissertation on adolescent development. And I gave this to a couple of friends of mine just to provide some edits, right? Richard, this, tell me how it is. And they did that for me and wound up presenting that paper. And kind of out of the blue, randomly, a month or so later, I got a call from a lady who introduced herself as the chairman of the Department of Psychiatry at MUSC. And she was like, oh, Dr. Harmon, uh, it's great to meet you. Uh, when are you going to write the second half of your book? And I was like, first of all, who are you? Why are you calling me? And, and I think my book is fine just the way it is. Thank you very much. And she told me, she was like, I really like the way that you're thinking about things, but you have neglected to put anything in there about the biological basis for development. And I was like, wow, that's a very interesting thought and concept. And that kind of sparked a two or three year relationship between she and I, and ultimately, five years later, it would lead to me leaving the church that I was at in Savannah, Georgia, and moving my family to start my medical school studies. You know, I've always had a passion to learn, and that has just developed into being a career. I mean, medicine's a career where you have to keep learning if you want to be relevant. If you want to help people as much as you possibly can, you have to stay on the leading edge of how medicine is developing. And so I, I was very fortunate to find a career where I can pursue that passion of learning every day. Ooh, uh, what's it like to be a patient of mine? That's a hard question. I think I've got patients that would answer that in a lot of different ways. I think that psychiatry in general has tended to become kind of non-personal over the years. 20 or 30 years ago, psychiatrists were the folks that were doing all of the therapy in the world. You know, the therapists weren't around. You'd go to a psychiatrist and they might prescribe medications and they would do therapy as well. Over the years of managed care and insurance companies kind of having more and more control, psychiatrists became the folks that would just prescribe the medications. And therapists would be the people who would go and do talk therapy. And I, and I always thought that was a shame. 
And so when I train residents to do psychiatry, I tell them all the time that you don't have to be a therapist to be a great psychiatrist, but every conversation that you have with someone should be therapeutic. There's no reason that that relationship should not be an important part of uh, what you do as a psychiatrist. So I hope that what my patients get from me is that I really care about them as individuals. I mean, I, I want to know them as much as they want to be known, at least. And I think the better that I know them, the better doctor that it makes me, the better I'm able to treat them, the better I'm able to help them pursue the goals uh, that they want to pursue. So I hope that's how patients feel about me. I hope my patients understand that I am in process as well as a person. You know, just because I'm a physician, just because I have letters after my name, that doesn't mean that I don't struggle and have difficulties in my own life and that I don't have my own therapist. I don't know what I would do without the therapist that I see, you know? So I think that the best doctors are people that are approachable, people that their patients see as part of this process along with them. I think empathy is just a part of life. I think it's a part of the human experience. I think we want to come alongside each other and to be able to connect over the struggles that we're having in life and share with each other the best way forward. So empathy and compassion is a really important part of medicine. It's an important part of being a great doctor, but I think it's a part of just being a good human being. Back in the 80s, I thought that I was a really technologically astute person. You know, I, I, I was around for like the original PCs. I would build computers in my garage because I wanted to be Steve Jobs or somebody fashioned myself in that way. But technology today is a lot different. It's a fantastic and wonderful tool that we can use to connect with each other. It doesn't need to keep us from interpersonal relationships. I feel like there's the ability to connect with the person on a computer screen, maybe not as well as in person, but there's no, no reason for that to kind of hold us back either. And, you know, technology has helped us to have just the most fantastic advances in medicine as well. There are a whole host of tests that we can do now to help us pinpoint different psychiatric disorders or the genesis of those disorders. And at Potomac, I think we are definitely on the leading edge of how to use technology to come up with a, an appropriate diagnosis and then to help develop a treatment plan that is very well fit to the individual. And so we're on the cusp right now of some really fantastic innovations with artificial intelligence and the way that we are being able to utilize that at Potomac and, and in psychiatry in general. Uh, it's going to be amazing to kind of watch. but. Uh, the wonderful thing about what we're doing here at Potomac is we're committed to being on the leading edge of uh, both technological advances and advances in the fields of medicine. And when those two things kind of come together and they could be merged together, I think we'll continue to see patient outcomes uh, really enhanced. I think there was a reason that I was drawn to work with adolescents in particular. And I think there's a lot of hope in that age group. I think that people are deciding when they are middle school, high school, college age, they're deciding who it is exactly that they want to be or become as individuals. And I really enjoy helping my patients realize their full potential. A lot of folks, when they come to me, they don't even know what they're trying to achieve. You know, they're trying to figure out what they want to do. And there are ways that we can help to flesh that out with folks too. Where is it that you want to go? Who is it that you want to become as an individual person? And once we kind of set that target together, then we can make a plan for the best life changes to help push you toward that goal, push you toward that pursuit. And I think what I've come to find out is that's not just an adolescent endeavor. We are growing and we're developing and we're becoming who we want to be every single day. I am, my patients are. And so if we put a little thought into how exactly we can get there, then we can motivate ourselves, you know, to actually make the changes that we want to make in our lives, to become better people, or at least to become the people that we say that we want to be. 
I would say that that's what really drives me. Hopefully it just drives me as a person, but I think that it drives me as a physician as well.